shattered both femurs. They intended to amputate his legs. I knew I could help him. And did you? Absolutely. After his recovery, Michael Jones was able to walk again. And why did he die, Dr. Vaughn? It's a painful fact, but there are risks in medicine. If you give a million patients penicillin, a small but predictable number will always die of anaphylaxis. But who questions the benefit of antibiotics? What did you use to fix his legs? I used two six-inch pieces of human bone that I harvested from a donor. I took them without consent. Why did you do that? Because we have a system in this country that favors the wealthy and insured. They expect that if they need blood, tissue, or even an organ, it'll be there for them. Truth be told, it usually is because they can pay. How many of those people do you think become donors themselves? I'll tell you, it's less than 10%. I took an oath to care for my patients. I had to do everything I could to help them. How's that square with harvesting bones from a woman who died of ovarian cancer? To the non-medical eye, I agree, it looks reckless. That's why I stupidly tried to cover it up. It wasn't reckless? It's extremely rare for ovarian cancer to metastasize to bone tissue. How rare? Put it this way, Michael Jones had a greater chance of getting struck by lightning or even dying in a plane crash than developing ovarian cancer from that donor's bones. And what were his odds of walking again without your help? Zero. It's a noble argument, doctor, but it glosses over the reality of the crime, don't you think? You stole human remains from unwilling donors, correct? Perhaps they were unwilling. There's no question they were needed. You had no way to determine their suitability, correct? The medical histories of the donors were never vetted. The parts you procured were never screened for disease, isn't that right? I made the best evaluation I could. I believe I chose good candidates. So confident you even sold the parts that you didn't use to other tissue banks for a profit. Correct? The money was only to keep my clinic running. You confidently chose good candidates like Tina Sadowski, a woman who died of ovarian cancer. As I said, the risk of transferring the disease was extremely rare. Except in this case, you were wrong. Michael Jones died. Jason Carter now has cancer as well. And I tremendously regret that. You knew with any illegal donor you were getting a loaded gun, correct? My patients wouldn't have gotten the treatment I provided anywhere else. So, in other words, you didn't think you were risking much. I'm saying I weighed the risks against helping people who desperately needed it. But you never told your patients what those risks were. They never had a choice. Isn't that right? Do you think Michael Jones would have chosen to lose his legs? In a perfect world, Mr. McCoy, I might be guilty, but I practice medicine in the real world. Where you're also bound by laws. We support a medical system that does not operate in the best interest of people in need. It's dictated by money, or, or more often in the case of my patients, a lack of it. Except that the system is not on trial here. You are, because you gambled with a young man's life and lost. What would you have me tell someone like Michael Jones? Too bad? As a doctor who swore an oath, to help my patients, that's not acceptable. He depended on me to save his legs, so I did. You saved his legs, you lost the patient. And given the odds, I'd do it again. Which is why, Dr. Vaughn, your cure is worse than any disease. Objection. Sustained. <sighs> Nothing further. The jury reached a verdict. We have, Your Honor. On the count of murder in the second degree, how do you find? We find the defendant, Adam Vaughn, not guilty.
take comfort in the fact he's losing his license to practice. I'm not sure people like Jason Carter feel that way. Jack, you were right on the law. Does that mean that Dr. Vaughn was wrong? 